So, do we want to do a cold opening? Uh -huh. Cold opening! It's been a long, exhausting day. Your troubles just won't go away. One thing that gets you through these is watching cheese. Welcome to Remark. I am one of your hosts, Kevin Reagan, and with me is your other host, Kristen Finger. I'm two drinks McGee, otherwise known. <laughs> Always two drinks. We got to watch not one, not two, not three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but nine. <laughs> right? Nine? I think it's eight. It's, it's eight, eight when you count. <laughs> nine kittens for christmas which we have already reviewed that one. Oh, i was counting that i am go back and you can watch that one it is up right now you can also watch our show where we remark on hawkeye Ooh, people love a good jeremy renner talk i do i don't know if people do but this people do dreamy so kevin we have a very strict time restriction for each a very strict time restriction yeah. uh, of each film's sort of review if you will remark uh so we're giving what's the most 10 minutes 10 minutes yeah so uh as you can see here is our we don't have a name for it chris you want to call it something the wheel of remarkability i don't know yes that that's it ding, right. ding, ding. i just ralphed right out of my mouth the mind. wheel <laughs> of remarkability oh. So as you can see, we may review for 10 minutes. We may review for five minutes. We may review for three minutes. We may review for one minute. We may not review at all, in which case we would pay a compliment and a criticism, ah. if you will, or a complaint or what have you on the film. We would each do that. Or we are simply just going to make fun of the title of the movie. Who knows what will happen? Only the wheel of remarkability. So first movie we're going to talk about was on November 26 at 6 p.m. And that is Christmas CEO starring Marisol Nichols and Paul Green. It's important that I point out that because of what I'm going to talk about anyhow, that this was a story by Sharon Price John, who also wrote Deliver by Christmas, an excellent Hallmark movie. Loved it. That's my Ian Bailey, right? Absolutely. Meow. And the other writer is Anna White, who has written a ton of Hallmark movies, including a movie called The Christmas Ring, which if you watched last year, Shannon and Aubrey did not like it. I did like it, though I might be rethinking that. <gasps> this is how we get away with talking about it uh, before there's time. Because once we <laughs> start... Start that time. Yeah. This movie is a small toy company, CJ Toys. CEO mm. gets a once in a lifetime offer to merge with a mega toy company, but will need her estranged ex business partner signature to seal the deal. Mm. What he helps her discover will change both of their lives. Wow. Not, not a fan of that description. Not a fan. Mm. So here is the Wheel of Remarkability. <laughs> That's all we can talk about it for is one minute. Kristen, we are going to start the clock. Go. All right. I'm just going to start off right up the gate. I didn't need that shirtless man in his bed. I don't need that man at all. Anywhere shirtless. Then we have to next see him with like 300 buttons undone yeah. unnecessary okay you picked the wrong hunk hallmark wrong hunk also he doesn't believe in women being empowered or running their own companies or having dreams kevin i hate this guy i, hate I this hated this guy girl. i hated the movie i like paul green the actor he's been in good hallmark movies i am angry he took this film but this movie 
to your point, Chris, does no justice for females at all. This kind of went back to the old school Hallmark ways, and I, for one, was disappointed. I will tell you one thing I that I like about I think it. it's all our time. Oh, I can't tell you the one thing. I can't. Yeah, but you can probably sneak it in when we do the uh, HB3 or H3O, whatever the hell that thing's called. It's a change. It's ever vescent. The band? I started a new facial routine. This is just an overshare um, to help with my adult acne, but it's drying out my lips like I'm like on Accutane again. Um, so if I really reapply chapstick about 600 times, that's why I, it's not about appearance. It's about, just it's dry in here. Really dry. Yeah. Really dry. A dry heat, a dry heat. It's a dry heat. But also thank you. My skin does look better. It looks wonderful. I said, did I <laughs> that? wait, I'll edit it in. It looks great. There, there it is. There it is. Uh, am I cutting all this out? Who knows? Let's see what happens. Who knows? I don't care. Adult acne is real, folks. <laughs> Chris, this one, uh, it's so funny that we only got to spend one minute on that one because I had a lot of hate I wanted to throw its way, and maybe we are better off not being hateful. I agree with you, Kevin, because, listen, over on the Hallmark Channel group on Facebook, a lot of folks are getting real angry with people being hateful towards these movies. However, they forget that it's a group about movies. So yeah. sometimes people aren't going to like what you like. However, Kevin, hateful is still hateful. It's true. Although I did hate this movie. I hate uh, it. That's a good thing to talk about. If for some reason it's the first time you've ever watched Remark, what a weird one to jump in on. But it's odd. Yeah. Uh, we never hate watch these movies. Chris and I make it a point. Uh, any guests that comes on, we really ask them, do not watch this to right. hate watch it. You may end up hating it, and that's okay. I mean, if you hate it, you hate it. And tell us why. You can email us at remarktheshow at gmail.com and tell us all of your complaints. Tell us your props. I want more complaints. Like, we haven't gotten any, so therefore I want a complaint. But, like, send us your complaints because I need them in my life. <laughs> yeah, about us. Yeah, about, about us. About us. Oh Not the movies, God. about what we're doing here. We need to grow people. <laughs> yeah, we need to grow people in a lab. The next movie we watched was also on Friday, November 26th at 8 p.m. I got to be honest, I like the 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock because fun. I wasn't going to bed at like 2 o'clock in the morning. I was like, this this can work. This, this can work. works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, also... Uh, I DVR'd them, so I didn't watch any of these at the actual time. Um, so I don't know why I'm agreeing with you. I was. <laughs> it's, it's the improv, improvisational comic in you. You can't help but say yes. Great, it's very great, Kevin. So for this one, we watched an unexpected Christmas. We sure did, Kevin. Um, this was written by Paul Campbell, and um, it is starring Tyler Hines and uh, Bethany Joy. Something. Lens. Lens. Bethany Joy Lens, yes. Yeah, so in this film, Jamie hasn't told his family, that's uh, that's Tyler Hines, Jamie hasn't told his family that he is now, he and his now ex-girlfriend Emily have broken up. After an inopportune run-in with Emily at the train station in his hometown, Jamie convinces her to pretend that they're still a couple to avoid ruining Christmas for his family. That's very nice and kind of weird. Uh, Jamie and Emily engage in a week-long ruse of engaging in his family's holiday activities together. While they're stuck in his family's home together, the pair discover their relationship might still have some potential, resulting in a very unexpected Christmas. Kristen Finger, let us spin the wheel of remarkability! Please give us 30 hours. Please give us 30 hours. Please give us 30 hours. It doesn't go up that high, but it does go to 10. <laughs> oh, you got the highest number you can get. What are the odds of that? Lucky Kristen. This is my Christmas gift to you. Christmas miracle. Kristen, yes. are you ready? I've been, I was born ready to talk about this movie. Well, then get going, go. All right. A, loved it. B, best thing I've ever seen. C, thank you, everyone. This is t hands down number one. We can't need it. 10 minutes. So we can do it. it. <laughs> Kevin, I will say uh, this was such a lovely change for us to watch Tyler Hines sort of as an actor, because yeah. usually he's playing this well, sort of at least very confident, well put together, assumably like sort of person. And, there, you know, he's played 
not like cocky guys. He's never done that. He's uh, not- wait, he, in Letter Kenny. He all right, he's played. All right, yeah. Uh, but uh, in this, we get to see him play, which also was delightful. That the male was sort of the who we followed sort of in the storyline um, of sort of someone that is flawed, that makes mistakes, that um, still doesn't have their beep together. Yeah. And I, I really enjoyed that a lot. And I thought he handled it so brilliantly because again, he has that charm and humor that um, I feel like this movie didn't even belong on the Hallmark channel. I felt like this could just be, you know, a, a movie that you could watch on Netflix. Like it, it was that. I great. agree. I think that a big part of that too is that uh, Bethany Joy Lenz was really good. Oh my God. Like I obsessed with her. Like she had so, no fear. And I think in any of the scenes, there was no fear because yeah. I think Kevin knows as someone that has no control over their facial expressions on 24 seven basis, Bethany, her facial expressions were delightful. Yeah. Mixed with Tyler's, there are so many great screen grabs you can literally just take of the two of them making faces. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I like this too. I like the fact that Tyler Hines' character, um, like you said, he's flawed, but it's even more than that. It, there's a border. I hope he sees gets a little bit of help because there is a depression in there. Um, yeah. He breaks up the relationship because she's becoming more successful than him. And it's not an ego thing. It's probably wrapped in, but it's because he feels like she's not going to want him. Like he's I can quote, stuff. I can quote what he says. Um, do it. I was afraid I wouldn't be enough. Yeah. Stop right there. D delicious like that's a true like no, yeah. no no joke i the man i'm married to now at one point his career was really taking off and i literally would be like what am i doing yeah am i like what if i make so much you know deal out of like what we do for a living that i understand his sort of moment of struggle i don't i love spending my wife's money <laughs> 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 Uh, this movie had some real fun things. We'll kind of go backwards on it. One of the things I really loved was his sister, Becca, oh. had broken up in her relationship. And they kind of didn't come out at first. And my wife and I were sitting there watching it and we we're like, and then she said, her, my wife. And it was like, awesome. She was married to a woman and it did not work out. And it was like, there was something really cool about, they have, Hallmark obviously has been like divorce is fine we do not have to kill every single spouse off but it's <laughs> cool to also see them go yeah a lot of relationships can fail and it really came down to she wanted to have kids she wanted right. to have a kid her partner didn't and that dissolves that relationship and i thought it was a really mature and awesome thing yeah. to include in the movie yeah and i think also like becca is also my hero in the fact that she has a she shed that within the tackle box has yes. popcorn yes. like i just i i hope others notice that detail because the moment she reached over and grabbed popcorn out of a tackle box i was like i'll marry you like no joke like wow is a she shed basically like a man cave absolutely she because cooler. there's definitely cooler She's so much cooler. Um, just the fact that like there were comfortable chairs, yeah. but real, but then also like tools that would be and that heavy blanket. Like Tyler Hines looks like Doctor Strange. He does. He does. <laughs> but like that is literally my dream is to have a she shed like that because and um, the only reason why I would call it a she shed is because that's like a bit. Yeah. Um, and here's something fun. Angela Kinsey from the office has a she shed and it's called that's what she shed. <laughs> awesome. And that's the second time in two weeks we've mentioned her. So go back and watch our, uh, I believe we mentioned her in uh, nine kittens of Christmas. I don't know. I need uh, to be sure that we mention uh, Andrew Walker's cameo. We will. We're going to give plenty of time to that. Before Andrew Walker's cameo, I wanted to mention Michael Teigen, who is in this film, plays uh Tyler Hines' agent in, or his manager rather, in uh, uh, Roadhouse. Uh, Romance. Romance. And it was awesome seeing him. He shows up and it's one of those situations in a movie that happens a lot where uh, information is divulged to a person who's inconsequential. And this is their bartender, and which I also love that Bethany Joy Lenz's character was basically supposed to be drunk 
And they don't do that a lot in Hallmark. They don't do that. Uh, there was two scenes where they were essentially drunk. That one, and when Tyler was in there just with like a giant bottle of wine yeah. drinking. They don't yes. do that. Yeah, so it was, it. It, was, it was really cool to see that. And so she divulges to their bartender the whole secret that they're keeping. Mm -hmm. And then the whole family goes out to a restaurant, not a bar, and this guy, why wouldn't he have two jobs? A lot of people have multiple jobs. <laughs> and he shows up and they are just like, oh my God. It's so he was He was the perfect actor for that part because he just, the moment, <laughs> Because I think then they had like a callback to it at the very yes, end of the yeah. movie. And he it. walked up and then just walked yeah. away. This <laughs> is so crazy. He's like, I don't need this in my life. Chris, I yeah. know you want to talk about it. Let's talk about, we knew it was going to happen because Tyler Hines showed up in Aaron Walker's film. They're very good friends from yeah. the same town. Andrew Walker shows up in Tyler Hines. Boom. How awesome was that? Delightful. Yeah. The fact that he even was like, uh, um, I'm the table's under Walker. And yeah, like, Walker and they just, too. Yeah, yeah. They just like almost walk into each other. Don't eat. Delightful. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the joy of these cameos this year is something that should definitely, if able, yeah. continue. They're really fun. They're yeah. really, really fun. Yeah, we've seen some other ones. Obviously, we saw Paul Campbell show up in uh, Nine Kittens of Christmas. Um, Allison Sweeney showed up, uh, which we'll talk about later in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Earth it's is even cool. deeper. And there's somebody Earth else who shows yeah. up. So, yeah. So and we'll talk about that as well. Um, yeah, I really dug it. Uh, and the, again, you get to see that fun relationship uh, if you follow either of these two fellas, Tyler Hines or Andrew Walker, Kristen follows both, on Instagram. If you saw Kristen, Andrew Walker crushing Tyler Hines' head with, without realizing Tyler was filmed. So you can watch both versions of that video. And love it's it. I love I love friendship. I love it. You know what else I love is um, the fact that uh, Bethany touched Tyler Hines a lot in this movie. I know that sounds really weird, but it, it became more believable that they at one time were a couple yeah. because she felt comfortable with physical like touch. And it wasn't like, you know, sexual touch or whatever. It was just comfort. And it made them a lot more engaging, I felt, to watch. I agree. But there were like moments where she would like put her hand on his arm, put her hand on his chest and different things. Because I do that with my friends that I have a comfort sort of level with. Yeah. I grab Kevin's chest all the time. Yeah, that's why we do it easy. over uh, camera now, over the computer, yeah. because it gets too touchy. It's, weird. it's different. Yeah. But what I loved is that this felt so natural to me in both their performances, yeah. which then when um, the payoff, obviously, A, they're gonna get back together, but I think there was a really nice moment when she just said, I never stopped loving you. You broke up awesome. with me, yeah. you hurt me, I, I'm i gonna walk away from this. Yeah. And I I loved that moment in the movie because it, it felt true and not forced. It, it was also- very female empowering. Yes. Credit to Paul Campbell's writing, obviously, as well. It's just yeah. these people were humans and not like Hallmark robots, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And that's what was missing, again, not to go backwards because our time only allows for this movie, but in Christmas CEO, they did not have any. They had a past relationship as well, but not romantic. But you would not know that because it felt right. like one friend taking advantage of another the entire time. Whereas right. were two people, though flawed they may be, were very likable. And, you know, when Tyler Hines doesn't have his, he's a speech writer for the governor, and when he does not have his speech written, and he tells his boss, who is also a friend of his, she's very disappointed, but she yeah. cares about him and is concerned. And obviously, he goes right into a computer and he writes this beautiful speech for the governor to give. And, and Obsessed at the end when, like, even when he's searching for Emily, which is Bethany's character, which also, first of all, Operation Get Emily, the whole family gets in the van to, like, go get her. Yes. So Great. amazing. But there was a moment where Tyler walked away and then came back and like apologized like to his coworker and was like, I'm awesome. sorry for being me. And then walked away. Oh. Like uh, it's and the she most, knows she knows who he is. So yeah. it was great. Yeah. Um, uh, do I have, you have six seconds. Go quick. If you want to talk about the uh, rainbow unicorn. It's, it's a rainbow unicorn and he's in it. Oh, oh. oh rainbow unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good movie. Uh, and we can do this after the fact, Kristen, as if we need to. Naughty or nice? Nice. Nice as well. 
Christmas CEO, Kristen, naughty or nice? Naughty! Naughty as well. That one I would just not even watch if I were. Just skip it. It's You're just going to get angry. Kristen, then we moved on to Saturday night. Remember Saturday night? Uh, oh, do you remember? <laughs> We have Making Spirits Bright, which was on Saturday the 27th at, again, the 6 p.m. reasonable hour. This starred Taylor Cole and Carlo Marx, who you might remember from a great movie called A Christmas with the Darlings. In this film, Grace and Tony are from two separate families who are in the business of decorating homes for Christmas. Unfortunately, they have also been in a feud for as long as anyone can remember. But this holiday season, they must try to find a way to get everyone to work together in order to win a town competition and that could save their livelihoods. Kristen Finger, the Wheel of Remarkability says... We have five minutes. Hey, that's not bad. It's not bad. Are you ready, Chris? Yes. Let it rip. All right, great. I need to know out there in the world, please email us at remarktheshow.com if your family is currently in a feud with another family, because does this actually exist? It did in <laughs> Leo and Juliet. It does in West Side Story. It does in so many things. At, at Fields and the McCoys, there are probably families who are feuding with other families. But I just need to know, because I want to kind of bring your families together and work it out. We could do that. We Could, could we do it as beautifully as uh, Colin Marks do? Uh, this... I, I don't think I loved this movie, but I also didn't hate this movie. Okay, um, I be that thing, the I did choose the person that I would play right out of the gate. Yeah. And it is uh the character Wade. Without who, a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> you are glow what is it called? Glow uh Glowscape. Glowscape uh yeah. Yeah. Uh so I'm in charge of Glowscape, which is like this guy's basically What a weirdo. <laughs> Like such a weird, yeah. <laughs> uh, using all like the motorized crazy lights and blah, 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 blah. Um, but the one person that I also could see myself not choosing to play, but getting cast as yeah. is the woman that's in charge of the contest. Oh, I could see that. Yeah. That has the most annoying voice. She does. And woo I've so ever. Woo! Well, so here's my biggest pro I, I love this movie. I really liked it an awful lot. I really did. Uh, this is going to get a nice spoiler. Um, but that woman, so the rules are they, they, they take four different uh, groups that decorate houses and you have three days to do it. And you have from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. So the first day, 6 p.m., it is dark. And I'm like, okay, I mean, it gets dark right. here at 6 p.m. now. So I guess the yeah. second day when she goes, okay, that's a, it was like the middle of the afternoon. And I was Thank like, you. what the I hell? thought I was losing, losing my mind. mind. Yeah. And I, okay, listen, I get it. Movie making's like a lot. Yeah. But like continuity is a very important thing. Uh, it was a tiny scene. It would have been very easy to shoot that back to back with the other. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it was a little silly. Um, I didn't really write down too much about this film, except for that lady's voice and woos yeah. made me want to kill myself. <laughs> I did write down uh, Glowscape Wade is Kristen is in my notes. So we have that. Uh, what I want to say is the, at the end of the movie, the families do come together. Spoiler, should have said that first. And they make a, a, this amazing lighting display. And it was a really amazing lighting display. Yeah. And that was nice because so many times in these films, they're so underwhelming when you get to that point. And it's like... That was like the boat race that we had to watch. <laughs> yeah. That was supposed to be epic. And I was like, what? It was like boats. Yeah. It was just boats. Yeah. Uh, no, so that was, this was, that was cool. cool. Yeah, and I would be remiss if I did not point this out because my wife said it while we were watching it. Carlo Marx uh, works at a bar for his one friend. He's a little down on his luck. He's a business uh, mm -hmm. major, and he, you know he's got his. Uh, I almost said MMA. He's still an MMA fighter. He's a fighter. His, his MBA, but he uh, he is down on his luck, so he's working for a friend at a bar, and the friend gives him a hard time because he's not a very good bartender. But he takes the glass and he fills it up and he does it like on that slight tilt to not get head. And Julie goes, 
He knows how to pour a beer. I don't know why this guy says he's not a good bartender. So no, I did notice because that was an odd moment. I think it was just to show him in a moment of pondering of his life. Yeah. But it it did. They filmed the entire beer being <laughs> filled. Yeah. Because if you note before, his friend that runs the bar, yeah, like handed a beer that was slopping all over the place to somebody, and I was like, I think our our like. What our serving <laughs> <Their> standard <laughs> is way off. I want to say this too. The two dads were the ones who had the feud. They had been partners in business and they had had a falling out. Um, it kind of makes sense. One is more artsy and one is more focused on the business. Uh, and that's fine. But what I really loved, well, and I even said this to Julie, when the one father says that his wife is out with a friend, I was like, I hope it's the other wife. I hope it's, I oh hope my they're God. Out and they that were. was awesome and then they even said when they got caught by their kids they said we've been meeting together for years in fact every summer we go to virginia beach together and i was like good for you again female empowerment these guys can have their stupid feud you it's don't so have. stupid i love that the wives were like our husbands are idiots yeah. they said that they literally said that and they share it was really nice to see that because that is also a very realistic situation where um, yeah you don't give up your friendship with someone. yeah like come on i yeah and it, so and nothing because that's time no! oh, all right well that's enough that's enough like that. also this sweater's neck is so large i, I want to keep fixing it yeah but i think it's just a large neck yeah you can't take it off because it's not on the wheel of remarkability so you have to do what the wheel says oh oh yeah so again i give this one a nice mine's probably much nicer than Kristen's. I think so. I, I'll give it a nice. I think y'all should watch it, but I'm not sure if I'll watch it again. I don't know if it's going to be a repeat for me. I liked her a lot. I thought she was adorable. She's cute. She's All cute. right. So then we moved continents for the next movie that came on at eight o'clock on Saturday, November 27th. And that would be a little something called Christmas at Castle Heart. This is a Lacey Chabert joint playing the part of Brooke Bennett. <laughs> Uh, Stuart Townsend, and I did put Allie Hardiman, even though she wasn't um, listed in Hallmark's thing, like, I mean, you had to dig deep, but she plays Margot, and she is pretty important, so I just wanted to throw her out there. I loved her. I'd never seen her before. She was awesome. So this one, uh, Brooke Bennett goes to, sounds like Beck Bennett. I like Beck Bennett. I miss him. That's all. Uh, Brooke Bennett goes to Ireland for Christmas to search for her Irish roots. While there, she meets charming Aidan Hart, Earl of Glasslock. Um, mistaken for an elite event planner, she's hired to host his castle's epic Christmas party. Kristen Finger, here comes the Wheel of Remarkability. And he did a theme song. I wish there was one. No, no, no. I think it's just that every time. <laughs> another five minutes. All right. Ooh, I can talk okay. another five minutes. I'm All, right. Okay. All right, Kristen, I'm going to hit the button. Are you ready? Yes. Here it goes. Boom. Chris. Also, I, for, I need to go back uh, in time from the moment that you referred to this as a Lacey Chabert joint uh, movie, which is so true. These <laughs> excite us. Um, so she's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, she's so genuine in these movies. Nothing... Even when she's like upset in these movies, right. it's still like she's okay. I hope that's who she is in real life. Like I hope when golly, we, I we hope get so. to work with her, Kristen, when we golly, movie, here's the thing: I might meet her at Christmas Con. We'll see. That would be sweet. We'll see. Yeah. But I, I hope she's mean and like pushes you. Oh, no that would be there's awesome. no way. There's no way. Uh, so I enjoyed this, and here's something fun. Uh, Paul Campbell didn't write this. He rewrote this. Yeah, he so it was written, on. and then Hallmark wanted him to add a little bit more lighter and a different sense of humor and a little bit change of the relationships of folks. Yeah. So he uh, co-wrote it, I guess we could call it. Yeah, and I yeah. definitely could sense his uh, humor in there. Which I, You know, it's funny. I, if you have a way for us to talk to Paul Campbell, please send him our way. Because I would be willing to bet. Most people who do punch up don't talk about what they do in a script they just it's yeah i worked on it and that's it they won't give me specifics but i'm willing to bet he brought the lighter side of the duchess out because absolutely when, when they first show up and she's that stodgy character i was like okay and then again that's the importance of margot is so flighty and fun and the duchess says to her immediately you remind me of my son and i was like 
Okay. That's it. I, I really do because he spoke on his Instagram about sort of redeveloping some of the characters. And I think you're right, Kev. I think if that Duchess had stayed sort of snooty the whole time, we see it, it would have been time. so boring. Yep. Um, and, and, and not to cut you off, but she also takes the legs out from under when it comes to pass who Brooke is and we find out she's not this woman page right right she shows up and she was kind of a little salty from the beginning of the movie when we saw her i mean if somebody was pretending to be you and taking your yeah. right, you'd be a little but she basically says like why shouldn't i have you thrown in jail right now and the right. duchess steps in and says because you'll never work in this side of the of, of the world ever again and it was like yeah the duchess <laughs> I do think what's interesting is I don't know if I would go into business yeah. with my sister if it was Lacey Chabert's character from this movie. She has bad luck with her sisters in movies. She, she did nothing no. to plan this. She just no. went off with the Earl of uh, Earlism. Oh, yeah, I know. Her sister did do everything. Did everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know if I would be... I don't know if this is too presumptuous, but I would like to be cast in the role of that sister. I, you know, I, I kind of gave up. Oh no! Oh, I gave you the Duchess. I did ah! give you the Duchess. Yeah, I accept it. I accept yeah. the Duchess or but, the sister. But yeah. the sister was great. Yeah, yeah. I know we didn't, do, we didn't do it earlier, and I'm regaining. I'm reclaiming my time. But I would also put you in as uh, Bethany Joy Lenz's character, only so you can be the love interest with Tyler Hines. That's my gift to <gasps> you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much uh, so overall this was a great film however it had one of my favorite but then least favorite tropes which is the use of a ladder and no one falling off of it <laughs> i know it's too i know yeah as soon as she went up there's no way where that was in the film there's no way she was going to fall off because yeah. they already had connected and it was yeah. like that would be just nonsensical maybe that was originally there and one of the things paul campbell did is brought his eraser in it was like shh, shh, shh. No, no, we don't need like, that. No, 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 no. They're going to have their moment when they're doing the Irish jig together, which was yeah. so cute. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this movie also, they're trying, Brooke and Margot are trying to find their lineage. Yeah. You know, their father was adopted. And, you know, we've talked about 23 Me on here before in, in past movies. Um, and the Duchess is helping try and find their father, even with the mistaken identity of Brooke. And uh, in the end, this is a spoiler, and I was so happy their aunt ends up being uh, the woman that they meet at the very beginning of the movie who runs the pub that they're in. And I got to tell you, I shed a tear because I was so happy and I wanted that so badly. So I well, I got a little confused because when they first went to the house of the person that assumably was the relative, it's like, this is your uncle. I was like, wait, do we know him from the movie? Then I was like, oh, is that the chauffeur? Is that the house guy? And then I did that for every out. character that showed up. I was like, it's going to be him. It's going to be him. It's going to be him. Uh, and then, uh, uh. Yeah. But I was very pleased because she made the bit at the top of the film when she's like, oh, I'm an O'Reilly. They're I'm an O'Reilly. They're an O'Reilly. Oh, O'Reilly! Yeah, <laughs> very Irish. Very Irish. I do love that it was her. That was really cute. This gets a nice every time. Irish. It's a nice. Gets a nice. And that's done. Wow. Irish. Okay. Irish. Next, we had on Saturday at 10 o'clock. Saturday was big night. Big Christmas. night. Big night. Busy, busy. So Saturday at the 10 o'clock hour, we had uh, Shelton Benjamin. That's not his name. That's a wrestler. Blake, Blake Shelton. I said, I'm afraid. Gwen Stefani is dating a professional wrestler. Stefani. Mr. Stefani. Uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Blake Shelton, uh, his series, Time for Them to Come Home for Christmas. This was on the Movies and Mysteries channel. This is a part four of that series so it's i don't know what you call it it's not a trilogy anymore it's a film no it's a it's a it's a, it's a quad quadrant quadrilogy yeah Quadri um, <laughs> i've liked these so and because we don't have uh, um the red truck this year uh whatever that's called god wink no 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 nope. evergreen evergreen yes yeah, there's no evergreen uh this is kind of fills that gap i guess where yeah. you're getting the i guess uh, Although you have another sequel coming up at the end of end of uh, the Hallmark season. So this film stars Jesse Scram as Jane Doe uh -oh, and Brendan Penny as Paul. So during the holidays, a woman with amnesia. Stop it. They're just making fun of themselves at this point. <laughs> no. Listen, I, 
It's important that we stop for a moment and talk about this because Christmas amnesia is a thing. It is a real thing. Christmas amnesia is the best of all amnesias. The thing is, they've done that enough times so that that is now a joke. It's awesome. I just, I, I can't that. because I love when they when they try and explain the science of it. Yeah. Are we being timed during any of this? Have no, you we haven't read that. <laughs> this is also how we beat it. I haven't finished the description yet. <laughs> uh, all right, let me finish this. I'm sorry. So yeah. during the holidays, a woman with amnesia, Christmas amnesia, as I call it, catches a ride with her handsome nurse to investigate the only clue to her identity. Kristen, roll the big wheel of remarkable. <laughs> Sounds weird. Uh, oh, oh, one, another one minute. This is a good movie. How are we going to do this in one minute? We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. All right, Chris, on your mark. Oh, on your Carlo marks. On your your remarks. That's better. Better. (laughs) Uh, Carlo, you're going to do fine when we get to the uh, objectification. Don't you worry. Hmm. Uh, At least on my end. All right. On your marks. Get set. Go. All right. So the thing about this film is they needed to explain what Christmas amnesia is once again. Therefore, it is a medical condition in which they remember things like walking, talking, knowing how to go to the bathroom, knowing how to wear Hallmark coats. But the thing is, they don't remember anything about their lives, but it may soon come back. It's usually an unexpected case of amnesia. (laughs) Christmas amnesia. That's the name of the movie. It is Christmas amnesia. So we have little bits, drips and drabs. Jesse. Jesse. Well, her name is Jesse. Jane is the character's name. We ultimately will find out her name is Rebecca. She has this thing. She has a note that says, please come from Mark. And she remembers a Mark. So that becomes problematic because how can she and Paul get together when there's this guy, Mark? Because it's her brother-in-law. I'm fast forwarding through. We got a finger. We have eight seconds. I just need to make sure that we address that when they decorated the tree with the innkeeper, it was the most depressing thing I've ever seen in my life. It was awesome. (laughs) Oh, that's all the time we have. All right, here's the thing. I'm going to reclaim time because there are a couple things that are going to be mentioned regardless. This isn't really about the film. Allison Sweeney does show up playing her character from the original film, Catherine. And at the very end of the entire movie, when they kind of come back around and show all of the people whose lives they've touched, she calls out and she calls out for her husband and son, Jack and Will. And it was a very nice moment. They don't show up because we're not paying all these people. We're not paying all these people. Was it the same dog though? Uh, would it be? It was five years. Yeah, it could be the same dog. Sure. Same absolutely. Dog? Yeah. Um, Here's the thing, and it is very important. Kristen Finger, yeah. this is more of a trivia question, so I feel outside the time of our one minute, I can still okay. ask you. Did you happen to notice another, not cameo, but appearance by a previous Remark and Hallmark celebrity in this film? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm putting, I feel so put upon. Uh, no, I don't, not off the top of my noggin. When Paul and Jean at this point, not Rebecca, go to Paul's cousin's house yeah. and the wife and the husband greet him. The, I think the wife is, is his cousin and then her husband. They have a son named Charlie. Do you know who that actor is? A is little it? boy by the name of Azriel Dolman, the Screaming Kid! <laughs> demon Kid! <laughs> it was the Demon Kid. I love this kid. I want this Wow, I didn't even so- notice. He was as less As soon as he ran on screen, I ran to IMDb. I was like, that's that kid. That's that kid. And it was. And I was like, oh, I didn't even notice. That's great. Yeah. He's getting a lot of work. He's doing it. That's good, good for him. him. No, man. I hope he's the next Leo. I really do. Mm. Don't get mauled by a bear. Spoiler. These are his what's eating Gilbert grape. This is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. That last film, Naughty or Nice. I'll give it a nice. Yeah, I'll give it a nice. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I'd watch it again. Um, probably not this year because there's so much goddamn stuff to watch. Nah, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, see, there's some, like Beatles stuff to watch, man. I'm halfway through. <laughs> All right. Then we had a movie on Sunday night. We had our anti-vaxxing section on Sunday night. We had a little movie called Christmas in Tahoe. It was on Sunday night at six o'clock. It just yeah. sounded like you said Christmas in Taco. And I, can we watch that one? <laughs> well, here's the problem with 
Christmas tacos, if you eat them too fast, you can get a case of Christmas amnesia. Happens all the time. I've seen it. Is that how it happens? Yeah, that's that's the only way it happens. Oh, or a car almost hits you and you jump off of a bridge into freezing cold water. Sorry, sorry. I, I was talking about the other movie again. My bad, my bad. I broke the rule. I broke the rule. Yeah, Christmas and tacos. Uh, uh, Laura Osnes, uh, Kyle Selig, uh, Pat Monahan, and George Lopez. I like me some George Lopez. Yeah. To save her family hotel's Christmas show, talent booker Claire must ask for help from her ex-boyfriend Ryan, the lead guitarist of a now famous band that fired her as their manager years ago. I do believe that Pat Monahan, if I am not mistaken, is from the band Train. That's correct. They wouldn't shut up about it in the previews. <laughs> and I hate the band Train. <laughs> yeah, I don't care less. Hey, yeah, the skin and killer, the do the do, hey, yeah. Isn't that their song? <laughs> I don't know what the hell you just said. So, yeah. I gotta, I gotta look at this. But you know what? You know what I just said? That is the new theme song to the Wheel of Remarkability. Oh, it is. <laughs> you can't play that. Stop. I've got Kristen's audio out, and now you can only hear my audio <laughs> as we spin the wheel of remarkability. I forgot about rights. Oh, make fun of the title. Kristen, I'm going to give us uh, 30 seconds, I think, on this here clock to make fun of the title. Are Great. you ready? Yeah, I think we already did it, but let's I go. Know, we, we hit like a home run by accident. We didn't even know that was the thing. Uh, go. So you get credit. We'll do points. Christmas in tacos is yours. Christmas uh, in tacos. Yeah. Christmas in ta. I got nothing at all. Uh, uh, what about, uh, what if it, instead of Christmas in Tahoe, yeah. it was amnesia in Tahoe? <laughs> oh, I would watch that. Absolutely. How Tahoe about, is uh, in New Mexico, right? Tahoe? No, isn't T Tahoe's uh, uh, Nevada, isn't it? Nah, it's Tahoe, New Mexico. Is that right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. Please email us at Remark the Show. We're not going to look it up. In fact, so much so we're not going to look it up that I'm not going to allow it to show up down here. It's going to want to, but it's not going to. Someone needs to tell us where Tahoe is. I think I, think I won. Reno. Doesn't everything in Nevada end with O? Like no, Reno that's... and Las Vegas. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I realized immediately I am completely wrong. Uh, I swear it's, I think I win this one. I think it's New Mexico. Well, I think you won that round anyhow, because you had the two good jokes, as in two jokes at all. I had zero. So it is now officially in New Mexico. We have moved it there. Congra That's your prize. Congratulations, Kristen. Kevin, did you watch this film? I did not. Me I did neither. Not. Well, I'm not going to give it a naughty or nice. I didn't watch it. I so. didn't want to support an anti-vaxxer is what I... Well, moving on to another anti-vaxxer. Uh, we had the Christmas contest on Sunday night rounding out this crazy weekend of Hallmark movies. In this film, we have Candace Cameron Bure, John Brotherton, reunited from Fuller House, and Barbara Niven. So... We have exes Laura and Ben compete in a Christmas contest to win money for the charity of their choosing. The city watches them battle and choose what is more important, victory or love. Oh, Chris. All right, here is the Wheel of Remarkability, and we spin, and we spin, and we spin, and we... Ah, this one, we each have to give it a compliment and an insult. Ooh. A compliment and an insult. Uh, okay, so I put this one on while I was just working today. I have no idea actually what was happening, but I did turn it, I did focus on one point, which is when they were doing, a, there were elves, children dressed as elves singing a song with the guy. Um, and I literally said to myself, Kevin, you're get ready to bleep me out. What the f am I watching? <laughs> Did they turn out to be real elves, Kristen, by any chance? No. Okay. no, 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 no. They were children. So my, that is my compliment is that it was so bad. Is that your it, compliment. The, it was so bad that it pulled my attention away from my day job 
yeah. to look up at it. So that's my compliment. Okay. Um, my, what's the other one? Insult. Insult is movie. My insult is that um, Canberra's, Candace Cameron Bure uh, feels as though um, she can't kiss people because her husband um, is her husband, but she won't get a vaccination to save lives. That's my complaint. <laughs> That sounds that sounds pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to my compliment on this film is uh, based mostly on the print ads and the trailers. It looks very colorful. I liked it. Oh. <laughs> it really did. Like I was like nice color palette. Uh, my insult is going to be uh, oh man, because uh, I, I didn't want to watch it because I was so turned off by last year's uh, Candace Cameron Bure. Uh, yeah you know, Wizard of Oz debacle. Ugh. And then, you know, I'm not, so I just was like, you know what, well, I'm not going to watch it. So my insult is that I just refused to yeah. watch this one. So not really much of an insult. Um, uh, maybe a your mama joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, your mom looks so young in this movie that she looks like your sister because you look old without being vaccinated. So can I tell you, I, Barbara Nevin plays her mom and I looked her up and was, 68. She's 68 years old. And I was really surprised she does not look 68. Oh, no, so that's, that's going gonna... to you, ma'am. Yeah. That is literally going to be our friend, Allie Sewell at 68. She's going to look younger than Candace Cameron Bure ever has. Absolutely. Allie has the greatest skin of anybody that's ever. It's unbelievable. We should have just, should I set a timer for 30 seconds? We'll talk about Allie. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, uh, it's already set. So let her rip. Ah, uh, she's my soulmate. She is my best friend. And she's very funny. She's so talented. She's probably one of the most talented people I know in like a well-rounded sensibility oh, yeah. of being organized, of being kind. Got 15 uh, seconds. I get 15 seconds. Oh, I'm running loud. Uh, oh. When I found out she was a black belt, I was both surprised and then like, yeah, no, that totally checks out and makes sense to yeah. your well-roundedness. Allie's one of the greatest performers because she makes it look incredibly easy. And <laughs> ah! we love Allie. If you don't know Ali, you can go back to watch, uh, I forget the name of the movie last year, but it had- uh, uh, Hanukkah, uh, it was the, the the one the one about Hanukkah. Yeah, there's, there's one coming up next week. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, uh, with Corey Matthews uh, from <laughs> Boy Meets World. I forget what the actor's name is. It's Fred Savage's brother, Ben Savage. Ben, ben Savage. Savage. Uh, I liked that movie last year. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one, again, I'm not going to give it an audio or a nice. I didn't watch it. I chose not to. So, uh, Kristen, you did kind of watch it. I watched literally, I think, like maybe five minutes of it while it was just on and I was doing laundry and stuff. So I'm going to give it a naughty because it looked real dumb. I will say this. Uh, John Brotherton was in one of the very first Hallmark movies I ever watched with Summer Glau, which was called, I think it was called The Christmas Helpers, I think. And he ran, uh, I think, a Christmas tree farm. His sister ran, like, uh, uh, a Christmas tree shop, and, or a Christmas shop, rather. And then she had kids, and they brought in, basically, a nanny to take care of him. That was Summer Glau's character, who was an elf, and we knew that from the very beginning. So I when guess. I saw the trailer of these kids, their ears looked kind of pointy. I know they're oh. fake stuff, too, but when they were showing their real ears, they looked pointy enough. Although mine look kind of pointy right now, and I don't think I'm an elf. No. Um, and I was like... Is this a John Brotherton thing? He like only does movies where people turn out to be elves, but that obviously. Yeah. He, I will say, I did not like him in this movie. Well, then you can say all. that in this next feature we're doing, which is <gasps> Fingers Hallmark Holiday Hunk Objectification. There are eight hunks for us to objectify. So let's break it down. Kevin, which one would you like to start with? Let's just start all the way back at the beginning. We're going to go with Paul Green from Christmas CEO. Go ahead, Kev. You go first on this one. I'm going to say it very simply. I like Paul Green. I've seen him do a lot of stuff. I've really enjoyed him in. Um, he was in uh, a good Candace Cameron Bure film, which was Christmas Detour. And I liked him in it a lot. I hated him in this. So much so that I was trying to take away the actor and the character. So the character, I'm giving a zero. I know we typically do the actor, but the character gets a zero. The guy, I'm not even going to rate him because I'm disappointed he would take the part because I felt like it was such a step back 
for Hallmark to do this anti empowerment of woman. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent agreed on the zero for the character, and also just like he doesn't get my motors running. Yeah, um, you got like multiple motors. What's that? You said motors. I didn't know you. Had I have a lot of motors. Okay. Uh, so the thing with this is, I don't find him attractive, and I don't like. There were moments where I was like, "Why? Why?" Yeah. So I'm giving him a zero as well. Good. Make make better choices. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, the next film we had was this uh, new fella I've never heard of before in An Unexpected Christmas by the name of uh, Tyler... Tyler. Hines? Hines? Hines. Tyler Hines in Unexpected Christmas. Kristen, very quickly, allow me to tell you that last go around, I gave Tyler a 9 and you gave him what I listed as a 10 plus because you go way off the board yeah. in There's that some... one i really mm -hmm. liked him being fallible and uh but being there I, my one problem was that he still the character still lied to emily by saying that he could get the governor and he didn't know whether or not he could ah and sure stance he kind of did and then it fell through uh so mm, i'm still gonna keep you at a nine my buddy not up at that 10 yet it's not happening uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to first talk about the moment we see him. He's in a really nice, well-fitted red sweater. Mm -hmm. uh, we then get to see him go to bed in a red pair of plaid pajamas that looked so cozy. Um, we then get to see him in numerous chunky cardigans mm -hmm. that are just delightful. Also, not his. for... I know he gives a lot of this stuff away, but do you think they're his? Because, like, man, they always put him in them chunky cardigans. I don't think you understand. My favorite soup, by the way, Chunky Cardigan. I don't think you understand how much I need one of those Chunky Cardigans. I yeah. will wear it every day. I have a sweater that Maggie Gyllenhaal wore, like hanging in my closet that will never be worn because I don't want to change the musk of it. I will wear Tyler Hines sweaters. Is this a moment where we need to call the police? No, and... no, 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 no. It's safe. Okay. It's all safe. It? It's all safe. Okay, I don't it's know how you got same. Maggie Gyllenhaal's clothing, but, you know. Okay, so the other thing is, uh, TH got a haircut, okay? And uh, Mama likes the haircut. And he shaved his beard. Mama loves his beard. Yeah. But I love his face, so it doesn't matter. I'll take it either or, okay? Yep. Uh, also, he, uh, pants on him. I've never seen pants look that good. Um. I also have never seen anyone look that great in a unicorn that inflates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have also peacoat. Don't forget the peacoat he was wearing. <sighs> the peacoat and the way he holds coffee um, and the way he performs is beautiful. I don't want to shock anyone, but gird your loins. <laughs> he gets a 10 million from me, baby. Can't. This man, it's Tyler, dude, I, it's not creepy. It's not creepy at all. I just really think you're swell. I really do. And my husband gets it. He's cool with it. I, I just want to be your friend. I think we, I think we have fun. Yeah. It was delightful. Uh, yeah. 10 million. Uh, uh, did we talk about his hair yet? <laughs> Making his spirits bright with Carlo Marx. Carlo Marx, as I said earlier, we first saw or last saw in yeah. uh, Christmas with the Darlings, which I thoroughly enjoyed, uh, along with Katrina Law, Family Law. Um, wow. You know, there is a series that they have now called Family Law. We made fun of Family Law really? so much and they made a series. I, just throw us in a writer's room and pay us more than we're making now and, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, if we could just make something. <laughs> well, no, more than we're making now. I mean, let's be honest. We're not we're not poppers, even if I look like I am. Um, Carlo Marx, Kristen Finger, thoughts. There's something, there's something behind those eyes that I enjoy. There's something uh, under those sweaters that I might enjoy as well. Uh, he wears pants okay. But what I do like is there's something, I don't, I don't know if it's his Canadian accent or if it's something else. Yeah. mixed in there but i like his odd accent um i'm gonna give him an eight. Ooh, very nice that is an, an increase from last year at your seven five yeah i think uh, it's I because 
But yeah, I liked his character also in, in this yeah. one a little bit better than the the other one. I liked him. I, I he was he was such a fun. He's I like this guy. This guy is gonna. I'm I'm thinking he's gonna wiggle up into that Paul Campbell territory for me. I really right. like him. Uh, Paul Green, you're not getting in that territory, so don't even try. I'll try. Uh, I do like Carlo Marx an awful lot. I liked him in this. I like that red, like that maroon uh, jacket he would wear. Yes. It's really cool. It doesn't look great in the print. Like, here's a picture of him in it right here. And it looks okay, but on screen, it really pops and looks really Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. No, they, the wardrobe, well done. Well done. I liked him. Uh, I just going to sound really dumb, man. The His co-star in this film, uh taylor cole i meant to look them both up and see are they single are they married who are they? i 100 percent believe that she was completely in love with him like i know that you're supposed to as an actor but like every time she looked at him she just was in all of him it made me like him even more so i want to give carlo marx a nine up from last year oh that's nice that's very nice very nice then we had Christmas at Castle Heart with Stuart Townsend, who used to be married to your mom. <laughs> My mom is Charlie Theron. <laughs> yeah. um, not anymore. That's fine. That's all right. Uh, I, he's not married to her, and she's not my mom anymore. They got divorced, and apparently we did too. She did it. <laughs> Very uncomfortable Thanksgiving this year. <laughs> uh, Stuart Townsend, Kristen, thoughts? First of all, a is really Irish. So he really has that accent. Yeah. Uh, B, can we, the gray that yeah. was appearing, we know Kristen likes that. Okay. It's like a whisper of gray. He's got um, that Caesar cut, the old Clooney bit. Yeah. Um, I wasn't a fan of his wardrobe. I will be honest. It was yeah. a little boxy for me. I don't think they chose the right coats for him. Um, and I didn't, I his character wasn't like overwhelmingly like, really fun to me yeah so i'm gonna give him a seven because i think he's really cute and if you look at young pictures of him rah, 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 rah. yeah yeah uh, it, 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 he he is an older gent he's aging quite well but uh to your point um i liked him i liked him a lot i thought he was fun i like i i my one misstep i felt they had was when he finds out i do hate this and and it's a hallmark thing and i want to say that lacy they happen in lacy movies more than they don't which is where she's about to tell someone yes. something and they won't let her. And then when the truth comes out, they're angry. And it's like, mm, but you, you cut her off. off. Yeah. Like you were rude. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like that always gets me angry. Right. And it, it happened in this one. And I was like, come on. I like that she came back in this one. That it wasn't he went to the airport to get her or anything. She came back just simply to apologize. And yes. I was like, that was awesome because like, that never happens. I, not that I felt she needed. I mean, I guess, again, it's she says to her sister when they pretend to be someone they're not, her sister goes, you know, it's not illegal. And she goes, but it's unethical. And I'm like, it's also illegal. It's called fraud. Like, called it's fraud. Illegal. Like you're using another business's, yeah. like, yeah, livelihood. So, I mean, I, you know, I guess she did owe the apology. But I liked that she came back. I did want her, him to go after her. I wanted him to not be a uh, a shite in the first place. Uh, I don't have to believe that. It's Irish. Um, but I still enjoyed him. Same as what you had said. I'm going to give him a, a 7.5. He gets a 7.5 nice. from me. Yeah, a little nicer than me. Yeah. A little nicer. Well, that's obvious. Come on. <laughs> Three years. Uh, and then we have... Are we uh, we're not going to rate the Duchess? 10. Perfect 10. 10. Perfect 10. The Duchess gets a 10. Also, the Duchess's son, 10. So oh, pin. It was a goofball. That guy could have easily been Wade and doing the... Like, they yeah, have, no joke. Like, oh my God. When he just rolled in for that lunch and he was like, well, well, well. Hands in pockets. I love, the, I love, I love it. it. Hands in pockets when you enter a scene is A-OK. -okay. Um, <laughs> then in Time for Them to Come Home for Christmas, we had Brandon Penny. Mr. Oof. Penny. Oof. He also has the gray whisper. Um, and he has these eyes that are piercing. The only thing that's going to take off a few points for me is for some reason, sometimes he just doesn't seem committed to some of the lines. 
sometimes he just seems a little above it and a little like uh, a little hallmark robotic. And that might be the lines they give him. But I will say he was very warm in most of the scenes. Yeah. So there was only like a few spots where I was like, "Ooh, that was maybe that wasn't well written. So maybe I shouldn't take it off of him. But he's real cute. Um, and I think the two of them work really well together. And I, I, I think they've worked together in the past. So that might have come to play. There was this really charming moment where he could tell she was upset sort of during that Christmas, um, choir singing at the mass. Yeah. And he like, he like put her, put his hand on her hand, not in a romantic, but in a, yeah. I'm just sort of here for you. So I'm going to give him a 7.5 for that. Nice. I, I, I don't, think he's really cute. I don't know what you gave him last time, Chris. I don't have it recorded. And I don't know if it means in the episode you didn't ever say it, but I couldn't find it, which was so. Did he do fun. one last year? Yeah, yeah. I forget what the name of it oh. was. I, I gave him an eight last year. So, and oh. I'm going to tell you, I gave him an eight again this year. I agree with you that there are times where it almost like he throws lines away. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was the character because he was obviously distracted. There yeah. was a scene where she held his hand as well where he's talking about his brother. And this is a spoiler. If you want to watch this movie, don't watch this part. Uh, just like fast forward through it. When I wave my hands, you can you can stop. But he gets a phone call from his brother, Ben, and they do it so well that I just assumed he just got that phone call from his brother, Ben. And the whole thing's about going home to his brother, Ben. I know we're talking about the movie again. Uh, and then he tells her, my brother died last year, last January. And it's like, he's been listening to that message over and over to hear his brother's voice. And I was touched. And when he goes to his brother's cemetery site and cries, it was awesome. Cause it's great. that cry where you try not to, but you can't yeah. do it. And I was like, this is great. And oh, the he's fact wonderful. That, she, that she didn't show up at the cemetery, I was so grateful because- I was like, so oh, worried she'd roll there. up there. Yeah. I was like, this isn't yep. where we do this. Nope. Agreed. And then, you know, it, everything works out. Oh, here we go. Uh, but yes, I give him an eight. So there you have it. Chris, because we don't mind objectifying when we don't watch, we can do that too. So we have uh, Kyle Selig, who quite fr- in uh, Christmas in Tahoe, quite frankly, he looks like a kid. What's like, his name? I'm going to Google him. Kyle Selig? Maybe it's Selig, like Bud Selig, the uh, ex-commissioner. of Kyle Selig. I see it. I see it. He looks like a kid, and I'm not objectifying a kid. I he mean, does I'm look like a child. I'm not going to objectify Azriel Dalman, mostly because I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a little baby. You know what, though? He can wear a white shirt and a skinny tie. I'm not going to lie. All Just right. base. I'm going to base it off solely this photo okay. and nothing else because I didn't watch the movie. Go ahead. And what are we? I'm saying? giving this a seven. This okay, is a seven fun. for me. I'm not going to give it a seven, but I will say he can be the lead singer of my ska band. So, Can I be the skanker? Oh, you're out. I've kicked you out. You're out. I'm sorry. That's sorry to say. rude. Well, it happens. And finally, John Brotherton. I have feelings. I like John Brotherton from the Christmas contest. Kristen clearly doesn't, seeing as her face is melting right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I like John Brotherton. I liked him in previous stuff. I liked him in Fuller House. Uh, he's a funny dude if he's given the right stuff. Uh, I do want to see him break away from, you know, this world. But so uh, I'll give him, uh, so Kristen doesn't jump through the screen and kill me, I'll give him a seven. No, this, he was so bad. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he took, like, because he was supposed to be like an ex sports player of some yeah. sort. I don't even, I don't know what sport I wasn't listening, but right. I think he took the, like, they're like, yeah, win. All right. Like too, yeah. too far. And I hated it. I hated it. I, he's getting a point two. Whoa, a point two. That's lower than a point three. I, I hate it. say a one. I don't know. Well, there you have it. Next <laughs> week, you can tune in to see on Friday, December 3rd, Eight Gifts of Hanukkah. Saturday, December 4th at 8 o'clock, A Very Merry Bridesmaid. I so want to say That one looks really cute. Looks cute. Uh, Saturday, also the 4th at 10 o'clock, Our Christmas Journey. I'm excited for that. That's Holly Robinson. Pete, (gasps) I 
You'll feel like Holly Robinson, Pete, and I are going to work together. I've said that last okay. year. It's going to happen. Leave it open. The world will make it happen. Yep, there it is. And the first part on Sunday, December 5th, of our sister swap movies, A Hometown Holiday. I will admit, I am excited. Very excited. That and its sequel. Also, you can catch Kristen Finger and Mike Gregoric and myself, Kevin Reagan, every, we don't know what day, it's usually on a Thursday or Friday, but if you watch Hawkeye on Disney Plus on Wednesdays throughout 2021, yeah. we will be reviewing, remarking on, what the hell, reviewing, what's that? We will be remarking on them through the rest of the year. Also, if you're not a Marvel fan and you love Christmas, Hawkeye is like the diehard of Christmas TV shows. It's Absolutely happening at christmas it's so christmasy there's christmas music it's delightful if you're a hallmark fan and you're watching this and you're like i just don't care about it listen if you like tyler hines here's his picture this is from the set of dr strange part two <laughs> he is the new dr strange <laughs> uh, i've i have said to tyler hines if you are not say nothing but if you are no no other way around if you are oh. say nothing if you're not come on the show and tell us has he been on the show no he has not no he has not yeah. We can only assume the multiverse has combined with the Hallmark multiverse. Wait, the Marvel multiverse has combined with the Hallmark multiverse. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> Until next week. I love Tyler Hines.